Hi, Julia Usher, Recipes for a Sweet Life. Welcome back. I've got another great prettier plaque stenciled cookie for you today. And it's my baby set, which you can see right here. As a reminder, if you're not familiar with my new stencil series, it was introduced late 2016 and it's designed in partnership with Stencil Ease. And the Prettier Plaque series is intended to make plaque cookies like these prettier than ever by creating an area in the center for the message that's not competing with the background at all. And we do that by using a unique masking piece in this five stencil set. Today we're going to be making this. I'm also going to show you how these stencils can be enhanced with small royal icing accents and wafer paper accents as well. So let's talk about what we'll need for this project. Basically, we'll need my baby stencil set. And as a reminder, it's got five pieces to it. The first is the background, which is the most lavish piece of the set, really the dominant pattern, which is just gorgeous. Here it's a picket fence with birds. That background gets laid down typically with a masking piece. This is the piece that's going to make room for the message over the background. Following that, I've got a shading piece, which is nothing more than the negative piece left after the mask is taken out. And I use that for creating soft shadowing effects around the message, completely optional. The fourth piece I like to lay down is the frame, which will surround the message. And then lastly, the message. The order is only crucial if you're using royal icing. If you're using royal icing, it should always go down in the last step so that every other successive stencil lays flat by the time you get to the royal icing. Today we're going to be airbrushing this one from start to finish so the order of operations isn't as critical. And when you're done with baby, I've got tons of other baby stencils in my line, some of which I'll show you at the end of the video. You'll need two iced cookies, completely dry all the way through. Ideally, you can work on any color background. This cookie in front of me is done on a light pink. I'm going to be doing this on white, so we'll com compare and contrast the differences in backgrounds at the end as well. You'll need various contraptions for holding down the stencils. I like to work with the Stencil Genie, which is a magnetized frame for holding the backgrounds flat and in place. Sometimes I additionally weight the corners of the Genie with wood blocks. And then for my smaller stencils, the frames, the message, etc., I usually weight them down with smaller weights. These are magnets. No need for them to be magnetized, but they happen to be a handy size. This is going to be a five color stencil. You could, of course, do this in one or two colors and it would be equally beautiful. So if you want to speed up the process, by all means, reduce the number of colors because that'll certainly help. I'm using two custom blends. One is a spring green, which is a mixture of green and yellow. The second is kind of a dusky blue, which is a mixture of royal blue, white, and a little bit of brown. Airbrush colors, of course. We don't want to use liquid gel food coloring, what I use in my royal icing, because it'll be too tacky and it'll clog my airbrush. I'm going to use two shades of brown, one straight up and one lightened with a little bit of white and a little bit of light pink. You'll also need some alcohol for cleaning the airbrush. I recommend just using vodka straight up, really cheap vodka, as opposed to buying more expensive airbrush cleaner from various stores. And then lastly, I love embellishments. So we are going to use some royal icing on this cookie, piped on directly. Also some royal icing transfers and little pieces of wafer paper to create a different style bow than I've used on previous stenciled cookies. Of course, I don't want to forget my airbrush, and I'll have a future video that talks about the airbrush I use, why I like it, and we'll really get into the details of how to handle it and clean it. So let's get started. Okay, on to the first step is laying down the background, and of course we want to situate our masking piece wherever we want our message to go. And I want to make sure my two little birds stay exposed, so I am going to put my message piece right about yonder and I'm really going to weigh it down so it doesn't blow around when I airbrush. There's a piece of the stencil that's kind of lifted here despite having the genie holding it down and that's because my icing I think on this cookie rolls down. It's just a little bit thinner here. So when I come to that point in stenciling it, I really want the stencil to lay flat. I will take my trussing needle and kind of press that down so I don't get a lot of underspray there. Now we're working with five colors. I'm going to proceed generally from light to dark because then I'll have less cleaning to do between colors. I'm doing all one cookie at once. So I'm going to go color to color to color, but if I were doing this in a production mode, I'd do all one color at once, then come back, do the next color across all of the cookies, and that goes a lot faster. It minimizes the cleaning between colors. 
You'll see me doing a lot of cleaning today, but that's not typically how I work because I'm usually doing more than one cookie. So we're going to start with a little bit of light pink. And because I'm just doing one cookie, I'm going to just mix it in the cavity of the gun. A couple of drops of pure pink, which is really, really bright, and then a couple of d drops of white. I like to shake that up because the white tends to settle out. And then I'll put my cap on, give it a good swirl in the cavity, and then we'll see if it's the color I want just by spraying it onto the paper towel. Yeah, I think that looks nice. It's, it's relatively pale. I should also point out that I always do a color swatch beforehand. So I have pre-tested this. I'm not just shooting in the dark. I have pre-tested these colors, and I think they look nice together. Doing it on paper is a good test to always do. These are tight areas, so I like to get pretty close so I don't overspray into other areas, maybe an inch or two away. And I'm just hitting those pink flowers. Okay, and so I'm ready to swap colors. If there's any extra in the gun, you can dump it into your container if you want to reuse it. I'm not going to reuse these today, so I'm just dumping it in here. And I do want to flush it out a bit with alcohol. I just start by getting the excess out of the cup, and then I'll run it till it runs clear onto paper towel. I tend not to run into the bowl here because it can splatter back at me and get on cookies. So when I am shooting alcohol through the gun, I just usually do it directly on paper, paper towel, till it runs largely clear. Let me move this bowl out of the way so you can see what it looks like when it starts to run clear. There's still some pink in there, but now it's beginning to get less and less and less. And I think that's pretty clear because I'm going to be running a darker color through it next. I'm just going to dump out the extra alcohol. And next up, I think we will do the blue for the little birds. And I want to give that a good shake. Remember, this was a custom mix, and it had white in here, which tends to settle to the bottom. It also tends to clog the little opening in this squeeze bottle, so I'm going to pour it in. Just a few drops. I don't want to waste food coloring. And then just give it a test on my paper until it runs blue. That looks great. And again, pretty close, so I can focus in on these little birds without getting too much in the neighboring branch that's underneath it. That looks great. Again, this is my mixture of green and yellow, so it's kind of a springy green. That's showing up pretty nice. And I'm just going to hit all the leaves with this. I have quite a lot of leaves showing, so it'll be a lot of the cookie. Got a little too close there, and some of the coloring pooled up. I was trying to get close because I didn't want to run into the picket fence. But you have to be a little careful in getting too close not to get pooling because that can lead to underspray. And I think I've got everything, so I'm ready to move forward. Again, cleaning out this color. We're going to move on to dark brown next because I also have a light brown. And once I'm finished with the dark brown, I'm just simply going to add white to it to get the light brown consistency. So that's an instance of me going from dark to light, which is atypical, but it's simply because I'm light, lightening up an existing color in the gun. I'm gonna load in my brown. Just, and that looks good already. So very much less cleaning when you're going from light to dark, typically. And let me start over here on this branch. I think that looks good. It looks like a mess here, but when I pull it off, I think it's going to be pretty, pretty cute looking. Okay, so I want to leave that brown in here and just add white to it till I get a light brown that I like. So I've got my mixture of light brown and white in here, and I'm just running it out till I have a shade that contrasts that dark brown pretty well, and I think that's good. Now, when I'm doing stripes like this, I like to spray along the length of the stripe. If I go sideways, I tend to get more under spray. So you'll see me going up and down more on this area along the length of the stripe. And I'm going to do this pretty light because I want it to contrast the brown I previously used. So up, up and down here. 
I'm going to go off the edge of the cookie to make sure I get it rolling off the corner of the icing. Here I'm a little further away so I get broader, more even coverage. But as I get close to that pink flower in the upper left, I'm going to kind of have to come in closer to make sure I don't overspray onto that flower. A little closer here trying to avoid the pink area. So I think that looks good. It probably looks like a mess to you. Hopefully when I lift everything on off, it'll look cute as can be. And it sure does. So here's an area where I got a little too close with that green, remember, and it sprayed underneath. Not a big deal. But that's because my gun was too close and I got an excess of food coloring there. So as long as this is dry, I can move on to the next step, and the next one is laying the frame. I'm going to do that in the same blue that I did the birds in, just because I want to draw a little more color into this cookie. I've got a lot of brown going on. So I'm putting this frame, just lining it up with where the mask was. I think this is pretty good. And then I'm going to use smaller weights on this. Maybe I don't need that many. As, so I can get as close to the frame as possible. That way it just lies flatter. Okay, now remember I've got brown in here, so I need to clean that out. And probably pretty well, because I'm going to blue, which is lighter. Sometimes to really clean it out, I'll put my finger over the needle gently and pull back on the trigger, and that causes a bubbling back kind of action, which cleans out any coloring that might be inside the gun. It's almost there. As you can see over here, just a light haze of brown. I think that's pretty good. I'm going to dump that out and move back to my pretty blue. Okay, that color looks good, so onward. I can be a little further away because there, I have no areas that I'm going to run into. I don't have to be quite as close, and that prevents beating up of extra color in these narrow spaces along the frame. I think that looks pretty good. There's a little haziness around here, simply because I think my stencil was a little bit lifted, but that looks lovely. One thing I didn't do is use my shading stencil. I can try it now. However, I will go over that blue frame, but I'm gonna give that a shot and see what that does. Normally I would shade with it first, to create just a subtle shadow on the inside of the frame. But let's see what happens if I do it in reverse. I think I'm going to work with this blue, but I think I'm going to lighten it, what's in the cup up a little bit. Now, the shading stencil always goes outside the frame. The idea is to bridge any gap between the background and the frame by filling in this little area here and also shadowing inside the frame. I want to spray it at a distance so it'll be really light, hopefully. And I'm going to concentrate it, I think, on the inside of the frame just because I don't want to cover the bow that I just did. Now, if I had done this in the opposite order, I wouldn't have to worry about covering the bow. So I'm going to keep it a, a great distance and just do a little shading. I'll do it on the outside of the frame, too, just to fill in that gap. And that looks good. That's all I want to do. So it just gives it a little more antique effect as compared to this one, where I didn't do any shading, and it's quite crisp and clean between the frame and the message. Our last step is laying down the message, and I think I want to bring in that dark brown again, similar to what I did on that cookie in front of me. So I'm just getting it centered and again weighting it as I always do. And we're going to change colors one last time. And I think that looks pretty good. I might just touch it here on the end where it doesn't seem to be quite as dark. the big reveal. Looking quite lovely as she is. 
If there's one thing I would like to adjust, it's the bow. There's quite a lot of density of blue there, so that's where I'm going to focus my embellishments. Once we trim out the border, I'm going to do some special things on that bow just to give it a little more interest and lift, literally. So just as an aside, you can get quite a lot of variation using the same stencil set just by varying the background color on the cookie. I often do this when I'm creating platters just to create more interest without creating brand new cookie designs. So for instance, this has a pale pink background, pale yellow background, and a plain white background, and the mixture of these three on a plate just looks really lively. Now let's move on to the embellishments. So before we proceed to the embellishing, which is always a really fun part, I just want to put these cookies side by side and point out some differences. This isn't the most perfect specimen, but we'll make it a teaching point, and I'm being a little bit picky, mind you, I'm quite a perfectionist. You'll notice there's a little spot here in the brown. That's probably a situation where I got too close with the airbrush, with the, with the gun itself, and there was a little pooling of color, and that created a little splatter. Same thing here on the green leaf. I pointed that out earlier, probably too close, and I sprayed some coloring underneath. I'd say that in general, in comparison to this cookie, the bow on the one beneath is a little less crisp, and that's probably a situation of the stencil being perhaps a little bit lifted here. As I mentioned before, this cookie has a little bit of a wave to it. It's high here and it goes low here, so it's very important to have the stencil lying flat, and that usually is greatly helped by having a really flat cookie to start, but if, if you don't have that, then get that trussing needle in there and press down on the stencil, and I think that area could have benefited from that. But all in all, it looks lovely. I'm going to dress it up much as I did this one, with a little bit of beadwork to kind of break up that blue ring, and also some wafer paper accents and transfers in the center of the bow. Let's start with the icing, though. I've got my beadwork consistency icing in here, and I want to start with some teeny, teeny, tiny dots around the outside, so I've hardly cut my tip open at all. It's important if you can to, when you're doing dot work, especially the small dots, to try to keep that cone pretty vertical, so you're getting a really rounded shape as opposed to an oval. If you start going sideways, it goes a little more oval. And I'm barely pressing out the icing, I'm just kind of letting it drop on its own. And just using the guide of the frame, what's already been stenciled, to determine where I put the dots. So that's kind of the nice thing about stenciling. It creates built-in tracing or drawing guidelines, if you will. I'll stop right there. I'm just going to open it up a touch to create bigger dots along the edges here. Because the pattern is so jazzy, I don't think it needs much, but I do like cleaning up the edges, particularly if they're at all wavy. And a dot border will conceal any waviness to the edge. Now lastly, as I mentioned, I want to give this bow some actual lift, really some relief. And to do that, I'm going to work with little, little teeny triangles of wafer paper that I pre-cut out of a larger sheet. Wafer paper is essentially potato starch and water and oil dehydrated into thin sheets. So it's edible, but doesn't have any flavor. There's some wafer paper now that's flavored with sugar and sweet, but this is kind of like a communion wafer. So I'm just going to glue it to break up that big mass of blue in the bow. I am just going to glue it down. Just a simple royal icing transfer looks nice there as well, but I am going to show you the combination of the two. So I'm just going to glue it down in the center, trying to avoid those dots that I just placed, because they're not dry. And I'm not lining it up with the bow. I, I want to see a little bit of that blue underneath, so I'm kind of putting it at an angle. And that one's lying quite flat, so I want to make sure I bend this one a little bit before it goes down so it sticks up. I can bend that one a little bit later, probably, too. Yeah, so that has some nice dimension there. Let's see if I can just fold this one up a bit. Looking good. I brought in some pink in the bow because I didn't capture as many pink flowers 
on this particular cookie as I did on some of the others. And that's simply because I put my frame over them. If I had dropped my frame lower, I would have seen more pink flowers, which might have been nice. But I'm compensating by adding pink to the bow. And then we just want to close off that seam with a little royal icing transfer. And a reminder, I have a whole other video about how I make these little beads. So they're great to do in advance and have handy for decorations just like this. So there she is looking super sweet. I do think the added embellishment of the bow did add a lot of extra oomph without a lot of extra effort. Of course, the stencil is gorgeous too. Now, if you don't want a baby cookie that's quite as gender neutral as this, I've got plenty of others over on the stencilease.com site. A reminder, that's my partner and all of my stencils can be found there. I've got some that say it's a boy, others that say it's a girl, and I've got stencils for nearly every occasion and season of the year. So check it on out and until next video, live sweetly.